then welcome to another episode of Sinu. Can't believe I'm actually somewhat on schedule. Uh, I literally recorded this episode right after I finished uh, the previous one. So right now it's a Monday. Uh, I think I'll release this on probably Friday or Saturday. You, you know by now what day it is <laughs> when the video came out. But um, I was kind of inspired. It was a long weekend. So I just decided to dive into the game and start working on many, many things that uh, we need to get done, starting with bus routes. This is a topic that's been uh, coming up quite a bit, uh, not lately so much, because I probably haven't done buses uh, recently, but uh, last time I did, there was a lot of people telling me, oh, those bus routes are not realistic, they they just go in weird loops, no, but no one will take a bus that would go in a loop like that. Um, and that's partially true. Um, so what I'm doing here, by the way, is creating basically all the, the bus lines from scratch. Uh, the, the, the reasoning behind that, and I think I mentioned this before, but I'll repeat it again in case you didn't hear it. Uh, the layout of the city was constantly changing. So whenever I laid down a bus route, I would just, uh, you know, we'd have to refactor it every single time I would make changes to the neighborhood. And since I'm not planning on making any more changes to any of these, uh, you know, Western islands, I'm actually gonna connect all the islands. Uh, from uh, this one, which is the base one, to the one uh, where the airport is, uh, with bus routes. Uh, I'm not planning on changing the layout at all anymore. Uh, it's staying as it is. Uh, all that's going to need is just extra details. But, um, you know, I decided to just give it a shot, put down realistic bus routes. I think we're going to have a total of five or six at the end of the episode. I noticed so many issues with the lanes that I forgot to connect, uh, as is this case. Buses were taking like weird turns as they were, uh, you know, as they try to find a path to the next stop. Uh, so, you know, besides adding all these bus lines, I found a lot of issues uh, across uh, CNU that I needed to fix, which was great as well. I spent quite a bit of time doing this. Um, you may notice that all the lines are white uh, and they're not colored. I wish that I could color them, but uh, the problem is that the buses I'm using, the bus asset I'm using, it, it's not really prepared for color. So if I change the color of the line, it would paint like those tiny, you know, I think it's like 15 passenger size uh, vans or whatever you want to call them uh, in a weird tinted color, which didn't make any sense. Uh, I don't like how they look. So just decided to keep them all white, which is usually the color they are. And um, in some cases I wanted to have stops. So for example, the, there's a line that goes all the way from the airport to the largest island uh, to the north. And um, I wanted to keep that as straight line as possible. And uh, for the most part, it wants to, you know, the, the pathing system wants uh, the bus to run on that uh, link road, which is a national road. Uh, in other words, I can't put down bus stops there. So you see me do this uh, just a little bit, um, you know, a second ago where I converted segments of that link road to uh, a regular road so that I can put down some bus stops there. I did that treatment, you know, in many, many places across, uh, across the city. And uh, over here, by the way, uh, you know, in, in this uh, sort of the, this massive project of me adding mass transit all over, uh, I decided to sort of connect the main islands with uh, ferry uh, terminals, uh, or, or ferry stops, I guess. And in this case, uh, I'm back to Fluxus Island, which uh, I asked permission to edit. <laughs> and I mean, I really didn't do much uh, work here. I just did this uh, little, uh, you know, ferry stop here. I don't know the differences between the terminal and the stop. I think they're just different assets, but um, it looks uh, pretty nice. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a lot of usage out of this, uh, even though it's properly connected to the airport and everything. And there's, you know, bus routes. There's like direct connections from the airport terminal to the bus routes to the ferry stop here thing. It's just, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I get zero ridership. People still prefer to take buses, and that uh, you know resort that uh, Flux put together. People still prefer to come from outside of the city to to go there. So I have very little local traffic migrating into that. By the way, there I just I was just reversing the color of the lights because I was told by a viewer that uh, they were incorrect. So that was me, well, correcting it. Um, one interesting thing though about, uh, you know, after a while, I let the simulation run for a long, long time, the, I mean, hours, uh, and the population kind of like 
stabilize, which was kind of magical. It hasn't happened before. Uh, we've been sitting at 28,000 people uh, or sims, if you will, uh, for a little while now. And um, I was looking at the city statistics, you know, in the menu, the main menu. And it's usually like death wave after death wave every time I need to like make a change on, you know, I add an airport or I add a, a neighborhood or I shut down the ship lines for whatever reason. You know, I just keep killing people. And now it's been like super stable. We have a steady flow of uh, people coming in and out uh, constantly. In fact, after putting down uh, the bus stops by the airport, the airport started working like tremendously. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's insane. Uh, we have so many planes landing, which is not necessarily great because uh, now it's no longer realistic. Before we used to get like one plane every, I don't know, like every 15, 20 minutes. Uh, now we're getting like three planes at a time constantly at the airport, which is they, you know, they're, they're close enough that they don't collide in some cases. Uh, like one will be taking off and the other one will be landing right underneath it. But, uh, you know, it's it's fine, I guess. Uh, there's really no, I mean, I have no control over that, unfortunately. It's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I wish I could slow it down more. Um, I still have a, a couple tricks that I want to try to maybe slow it down a bit. But uh, for the most part, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that and have to just deal with it, you know? Uh, I, I still have a huge amount of ships coming from the edge of the city, which is even more unrealistic. Uh, whenever I show, you know, aerial shots of the atoll or the project, you know, like in the cinematics at the end, um, you can see just like massive ships all the time. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish ships would come in less often and, you know, have greater quantities. I think that's just the game is programmed that way. It constantly needs to spit out ships with tons of, uh, with not that many people. In fact, uh, most of the cargo ships are like 1%, 2% instead of just doing a full load and delivering that uh, once and that's it. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate, unfortunately, but um, it's not too bad, and I try not to showcase that part so much. Um, in any case, uh, changing subjects here, because I totally went uh, away from doing mass transit at this point, and I'm working on details. This is the island of Feidu, which is, you know, the title of the video. And there were a few spots that I left unfinished on purpose because I knew I wanted to tackle those in uh, different episodes and this is sort of what I'm doing. Um, I'm just grabbing those uh, empty areas, empty lots that I wanted to do something different with. I had no idea what to. I kind of like winged it and uh, this is what I'm doing. Just adding a few props here and there. Uh, we're still, you know, on the verge of the prop limit. Uh, I got a lot of comments in the previous episode from people saying I need the uh, prop unlimited mod and I knew about that just so you know um uh I do thank you for pointing it out because maybe I didn't know you never know but um I'm gonna try to avoid using that mod as much as I can I feel like that's one of those mods that could cause a lot of trouble uh I mean I haven't even tried it yet but uh you know, anything that raises the limit of the game. I mean, I know I'm using uh, the Unlimited Tree mod and that one had a ton of issues before. Now it seems pretty stable. But uh, the problem with Unlimited props, as far as I can tell and from what people tell me, is that it's somewhat incompatible with MoveIt. I thought it was PropLine Tool that was incompatible with, but apparently PropLine Tool works fine. MoveIt doesn't like it. Uh, and I used to move it all the time. So I still have a couple of tricks up my sleeve that I want to try, you know, if I really run into prop limitation issues. I've been cleaning up a few extra props that are really needed for the most part. I'd rather do that, spend a little bit of time, you know, deleting things that are not really necessary. But uh, if it gets really, really bad and it really affects the, you know, the future progress of the of the project, I'd rather, I'll, I'll probably just switch that mod on and figure things out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm here working on another very low income uh, neighborhood, a bit of a mini favela here. Um, one thing I'm, I'm doing different though, and this I, I actually ended up liking this design uh, a lot more than the one I did several episodes ago, because it's a little bit more compact. I spe specifically put uh, 
the houses very close to the road. In fact, it totally clips with the cars when they drive by, but they just look more realistic that way. Um, you know, these neighborhoods are not necessarily planned. They just grow as needed and uh, they're kind of chaotic, chaotic. I can't say that word. Coyote? Yes, <laughs> they're very coyote like. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna leave that. I'm not gonna even edit that. I'm actually doing great. This is uh, probably the first episode I'm doing in one take, which is amazing. Um, I'm trying a different technique, by the way, of doing this, but um, so far it's working fine. Uh, in any case, um, that uh, design, uh, I might have to actually stop now because I hear someone mowing the lawn literally outside my window. I'm just gonna continue, whatever, unless it gets really, really bad, but uh, focus, all right. What was I was talking about? Yes, this uh, low income neighborhoods that are no longer on the screen because I went on a weird tangent. Um, yeah, so those houses, uh, they're not necessarily planned. That's why I wanted to keep them. That's usually how they look. They're like very tight and they just you just have like very narrow passageways or, or, or streets in between the houses. In reality, you would just have, uh, you know, walkable paths, but uh, these buildings need a proper road, otherwise it won't get serviced by, you know, ambulances or police or whatever. So uh, I had to make them roads at the risk of having cars, you know, clipping between the walls, but uh, it, it really doesn't happen that often, so I just decided to keep it. And uh, finally, I'm just doing this uh, also somewhat planned uh, neighborhood. I put all the houses that are exactly the same, and um, the thought process there was that maybe that was those were houses done by by the government basically um, for low-income uh, people as well. So they were all built at the same time using the same uh, uh, blueprints. Uh, so that's why they look the same. They just have a, a few little, um, you know, just a few little details, uh, a few a couple trees for the most part. In fact, I've been using. Uh, I, I tried at least to use uh, fences. Uh, sorry, bushes for fences. Um, so on that, you know. By doing that, I just save a little bit on, on props for the most part. Now, over here, uh, what I'm working on is on a roundabout that in real life, it uh, it's less, um, you know, rigid, if that's probably the sort of right term. Um, cars can just like take whatever direction they want. It's like basically a big concrete or pavement slab. Uh, it doesn't have any markings or anything. It was a little bit harder replicating that end game, uh, especially because uh, the actual roundabout that's uh, there, it's significantly narrower than uh, the one um, I ended up making. But uh, I actually liked how it worked. Uh, you're gonna see, um, there's cinematics of that. I just couldn't fit everything I did into cinematics. But uh, at the very end, where the when I rolled the end cards and everything else, you can see a detailed cinematic of this uh, roundabout, just uh, if, it, if you're interested in seeing it you know, in closer detail. Um, so, all right, so I talked about the bushes as fences. Yeah, so this bridge literally looks like that. I know it's a weird shape because there's like a gap in between the two lanes, uh, but that's literally how it looks in real life. I try to copy it as much as I could. And uh, just adding, I, I love this uh, pillars, by the way, the brick pillars. Uh, you can use them for everything. In fact, I'm using there to sort of create supports for the endpoints of this uh, little bridge. And I think they came out great. Just uh, using a couple of jersey barriers and obviously putting down all these uh, custom made bollards that uh, are all over the place in the real scene. <laughs> um, I think they were made by that Evan specifically for the series a while back. I love them. I use them everywhere. Uh, and um, yeah, so that gap was a little bit weird. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of detail. Uh, in terms of Google Maps to see exactly what it looks like in, in the middle. So what I ended up doing is setting a few little few little decals that just make it, uh, you know, look unused mostly. <laughs> They're just damaged in the middle. And uh, obviously adding guardrails uh, in the critical spots, it's uh, definitely something that just adds extra level of detail at the risk of adding more props, but I think it's worth it. Uh, if anything, I'll remove other props. Like I mentioned before, uh, you know, fences that are hidden under trees or vegetation like that. I, I try to like clean it up now, not leave it, uh, especially because you want, you'll never see them. 
Now, this uh, building is another mosque, and I say another because, and I didn't specify this, the, the one, the building that we just detailed a second ago was also a mosque. In fact, and I did mention this before, there's so many mosques around this whole atoll that uh, we're probably going to have to add a few more. But uh, this one, the one I'm working on right now, it's probably the biggest one. And uh, in my mind, I thought this one would, could be, you know, the newest one. Uh, it was like recently built. Uh, and I uh, just figured that uh, it would be interesting to have, uh, a, you know, just do a little terraforming there so that it looks as if this, uh, you know, this lot, this plot of land uh, was just uh, gained on the ocean a little bit, hence uh, the edge having uh, breakwater rocks. So um, I, I figured they put pour down some sand to sort of extend uh, the, the area of the lot a little bit and just uh, for reinforcement and to prevent uh, erosion, they just put down some breakwaters there. That's mostly what they are for. And, uh, you know, I wanted to also keep the, the design of this one a little bit simpler. Again, I'm using all these uh, bushes as uh, fences just to save on, on the prop count a little bit. But uh, at the same time, I didn't want to like fill it with vegetation and make it really, really crazy. So I went for the manicured grass. Uh, and as you can see here, it, it fits almost perfectly in every nook and cranny. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of overlapping here and there. It's not too bad, especially because I, I am going to cover it with a little bit of uh, vegetation. So you can't really see the imperfections. Just adding, you know, these like large bushes and just uh, clusters or tiny clusters of flowers. That's usually my go to style for for decorating large patches of things. Just do things in cluster. Tends, uh, tends to look pretty nice and you save uh, on resources and assets. Um, for the most part, uh, I wanted to keep this uh, pretty like bright and light and uh, I ended up deciding adding uh, a little fence here so that, uh, you know, to prevent kids from drowning if they wanted to take a look at the, uh, you know, at the other end of the, the mosque they're just playing uh, while their parents are at mass or something like that. I don't know. Uh, in any case, moving on to this uh, area right here. This is a bit of a very tight, compact interchange. I mean, you, you can only go two ways here, so it's really not uh, a huge interchange by any means. Uh, it's literally this uh, four-lane road. By the way, I, I didn't mention this, but as I was working on the bus roads, I had to convert a lot of uh, roads to four, four lanes because I was just getting... A lot of traffic just backed up because uh, there was one bus waiting to pick up people and the bus before that and before that and so on and so forth so i just went ahead created a few segments of high traffic into four lanes which is not how it works in real life in fact there are not that many cars in real life uh, at least in this at all so but you know just trying to circumvent the limitations of the game for the most part i also started decorating uh, this uh area that connects to that super long bridge in fact that's the longest bridge we have i still want to come back to that one and add a few more details especially those uh, pillars uh, those brick pillars that i did on the previous bridge that look really really nice i want to try to replicate that design but uh yeah we're pretty much getting closer to the end of this uh of this uh, episode here i feel like we accomplished quite a bit I have no idea what I'm going to do in the next one. I have a few ideas, but I know I don't know for certain what we're going to do. Also, take a look at this, how passengers actually use that main entrance whenever a plane unloads. Isn't that awesome? And you can see them exit through the other way and just wait at the bus stop over there. I love how that came out. Uh, in any case, if you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. And also, if you're new to the channel and haven't already, I would like to encourage you to subscribe. But uh, that's all for now. I would like to thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.